federal judge ruled that over 30 lawsuits accusing U.S. hotel chains of turning a blind eye to sex trafficking in their establishments. Survivors of human trafficking now are fighting back now more than ever, and not just against the traffickers, but the businesses they say made their money off their own misery. Welcome back, everyone. You know, today we're going to be looking into human trafficking in the hotel industry and that how apparently it's not just that people have been using them for sex trafficking and crimes, but in a lot of these cases, the hotel owners themselves, the managers, and even the employees have been a part of the actual crime as well. Like, literally profiting from it. A federal judge ruled that over 30 lawsuits accusing U.S. hotel chains of turning a blind eye to sex trafficking in their establishments can proceed in Columbus. Now the judge denied the chain's request to transfer a majority of the case's jurisdiction to a courtroom outside of Ohio. According to the judge, five of the 36 total cases were approved for a venue change out of the state. Now the cases mark the first time major U.S. hotel chains are accused of violating the Trafficking Victim Protection Reauthorization Act. Now the hotel chains named as defendants in the suits are listed on your screen. A spokesperson for Red Roof Inn denied the lawsuit's allegations, saying in a statement that the company condemns human trafficking in all its forms. NBC4's inquiries to other hotel chains named in the suit were not returned. And for more on the story... So recently, more than 40 human trafficking lawsuits have been filed against major hotel companies by attorney Stephen Babin and his law firm Babin Law. Now, these lawsuits targeted hotel giants like Wyndham Hotels and Resorts, Red Roof Inns, and Choice Hotels International. Now, these are not random ass hotels. These are actually quite popular, quite well known. I know y'all have seen these around, and to think that some of these owners of these hotels are part of it as well? Man, my mother stayed there before. Man, like for example, the lawyer in this case, Stephen Babin, has described human trafficking as one of the most horrendous things happening in today's world. And that Ohio, his home state, ranks as the fourth largest in the country for human trafficking incidents, with over 95% of these crimes occurring in hotels. Bro, what? 95 fucking percent of human trafficking in the state of Ohio alone? comes from their hotels and motels? Like, geez, is there no better way of telling us that the police are involved without actually telling us that they're involved? How are cops not regulating these hotels and motels, bro? 95% is high, my guy. Taking you to Ohio now, this morning 160 people are facing charges in Ohio accused of human trafficking. It's the latest in a series of law enforcement stings across the country. One just last week in Florida saw more than 200 arrests. Stephanie Haynes joins us live to tell us a little bit more about what we're learning about these suspects. And Stephanie, these suspects, it's chilling. They include educated, distinguished, high-ranking individuals. It's happening all around us uh, for people in our everyday lives. This is a money play. Some chiefs of police or captain, a sheriff maybe, some of these guys are involved with letting this shit slide. It has to be. I've always heard it in the background, but never really paid attention to it. But the amount of crime that takes place in hotels, like the infamous Kanika Jenkins case, where she went into a hotel with friends, stumbled out her room, and found later dead in a freezer. Talking about they got footage, but only showed us footage of her stumbling down the hallway. Surveillance video shows Kanika Jenkins walking with friends at the Crown Plaza Hotel early Saturday morning. We see her a few hours later by herself. At one point, she stumbles out of an elevator. Later, she repeatedly hits the wall walking down this hallway. Another camera catches her running into a stairwell and then catching her fall. Video time codes appear to show Kanika roaming the hotel for over an hour. She's trying to find her way and no one from Crown Plaza Hotel responds to her. Around 3.30 a.m., Kanika enters a lower level kitchen in the hotel. She walks out of frame, but then she's captured walking here on another camera, but we still don't see her entering the freezer. I wanna see all, I wanna see her literally actually walking into this freezer and closing us up within this freezer. I want all of the recordings, all of the communications, all of the reports, the statements, that were taken. I want to know the individuals that were there. Hotels are meant to be 
I don't know, a type of safe haven for travelers. But for many victims, hotels become their worst nightmare. And sometimes it even becomes their prison. Now, I can understand how someone can get trafficked through a hotel or assaulted in a hotel without the hotel staff always knowing. I can understand that. But a hotel as a prison for abductees? Somebody had to have seen them. Babin's law firm filed the first case in the county against a hotel for human trafficking in 2019 under the Trafficking Victims Protection Act. And one particularly insane case from these lawsuits involves victims being handcuffed to toilets while the damn hotel staff just ignored them. Why wouldn't these hotel staff members call the fucking police? Why? Though they gotta be hiring people with warrants out for their arrest in these hotels. There's no way. Or these hotel managers and staff, they're part of these trafficking crimes as well. There's just no way. 95% of trafficking cases in Ohio came from hotels and motels? What the f There's just no fucking way this is making sense to me. Y'all not shutting that down? And what is going on in the state of Ohio? If any of my viewers live there, yo, please be safe because ain't no way there's that much trafficking coming out of this one state. Records show P found the teenager through an online ad, arranged through text messages to meet her at a hotel, and paid her $80. While it's a, a horrific story, it's not an uncommon one. She has a name, a group that fights human trafficking, says human trafficking takes a lot of forms, but simply put is an exploitation of a vulnerability. And in Ohio, it's a big problem. This is the latest data from the Human Trafficking Hotline. In 2019, the state of Ohio had the fifth highest number of cases reported. The Human Trafficking Institute in 2020 had Ohio as the second highest state when it comes to new offenders. The lawsuits against these hotels are not just about seeking justice for the victims, but it's kind of also about sending a clear message. We do not care what it is. Being involved in human trafficking it will not be tolerated. As these cases move forward, the lawyer, Babin, he hopes the first of the 40 cases will go trial sometime next year. But we can only hope this leads to, you know, a real investigation, a real resolution, because like somebody has to be in on this for that much of trafficking to come out of one source. But, you know, you gotta stay safe out there, everyone. Leave a like and comment down below. This is Michael, I'm signing off. And remember everyone, oh, be safe. Says human trafficking takes a lot of forms, but simply put is an exploitation of a vulnerability. And in Ohio, it's a big problem. This is the latest data from the Human Trafficking Hotline. In 2019, the state of Ohio had the fifth highest number of cases reported. The Human Trafficking Institute in 2020 had Ohio as the second highest state when it comes to new